Hi guys and welcome to today's video on populations and samples. It is awesome to see you. Welcome to my channel. Now, obviously you're here to try and work out about populations and samples and random samples and simple random samples and population parameters and all that type of stuff. And that is absolutely coming up. If you are new to my channel, hi guys, welcome. I am Darren, otherwise known as Mass Guru, and I'm here trying on my very lonesome ownsome to help you get better at maths. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that. Let me know in a comment below whether actually the videos are any use to you. Greatly appreciated. Um, <clears throat> my job here is actually just to sit and try and record videos. And if you could and subscribe by clicking what that red arrow is pointing to, I would be greatly, greatly and deeply, deeply appreciative. Um, as I say, it's just me and uh, the opportunity of you subscribing just makes me know that you're watching and enjoying the videos. So let's get to start as I get smaller and the screen behind me gets more readable. As I say here, by the end of the lesson, we're hoping that you have an understanding and are able to apply to questions the concepts actually shown there. Barry over here in Australia is absolutely charged with making your life more difficult and it is my job to bring down the nemesis that is known as Barry to make this make sense. All right, so not going to be a particularly long video. He says, hopefully, there's some stuff you can use with your calculator. Um, and so let's get into the idea that this is a recap of the Further Maths course. Now, if you're out there in, uh, in the United Kingdom or America or India or wherever you are watching this video, don't worry about it. Maths is universal. It doesn't matter that it's tighter, a course over here in Australia that I'm recording. It's available and useful to all of you. Give a shout out to your friends. You know, send the link to a video and see what they think. Hopefully they'll subscribe as well. Now the problem with most of maths isn't the actual maths. It's the fact that sort of Barry uses all of this very complicated language. And that's what I'm going to break down for you now. So firstly, let's look at the word population. Every single one of you live in a country. And if I asked you what the population of that country was, you'd probably be able to tell me, hopefully be able to tell me. I did it recently and uh, I said, what is a population? And some one of my students said, 25.6 million. And I went, no, no, I said, what is a population? Not what is the population? Listen to the question. A population is something that we describe uh, or that we can sort of use to classify a whole group of people. And some examples here are all year 12 students in Australia. I may be trying to do some sort of survey or trying to find out, let's say, stress levels about you know, upcoming exams. Well, that would make perfect sense to look at all of Australia, all of the year 12 students. So I'm defining that as my population. What about all 18-year-olds in the world? Wow. What about every male in Victoria? What about every female in London? These are all populations. They are large groups of people that I am deciding to sort of find some information out about. The problem is, if I actually chose to do a survey about stress for all Year 12 students in Australia, the chances are I'd never be able to speak to them all. By the time I actually got around and spoke to each person individually, then they probably wouldn't even be in Year 12 anymore. They'd probably be sort of married with kids by the time I spoke to them all. So it's not necessarily practical to try and ask a question of everybody. So what we're going to try and do is narrow it down to what we call a sample. And I'm not talking about the type we take to the doctors. Thank you very much. That is not the sample I'm interested in. A sample is a small section of a population. So whereas we might be looking at all year 12 students in Australia, a sample might be, well, let's just look at those in Victoria. Let's just look at those in New South Wales. Let's look at those in Queensland. Yeah, a sample must be taken from the population. So for example, if I was choosing all year 12 students in, year, uh, in Australia, I couldn't then have a sample as just male year 12 students. Maybe we could, but generally speaking, you'd either want your population to be all males in Australia, and then your sample would be all males in Victoria, rather than sort of trying to change the, the parameters. I suppose the question is, though, how do I choose which sample to take? Why, if I was talking to all year 12s, would I choose just to talk to those in Victoria, or just those in New South Wales? And there, this is a whole new section of statistics that thankfully you don't even have to worry about, yes? But by the time you've sort of chosen your sample, there's reasons to choose the one that you've got. Um, you know, so uh, why do we do a sample? Because sometimes it's better to talk to a small group and make judgments than it is to try and talk to everybody. For example, if you watch um, Family Fortunes in the UK or Family Feud over here in Australia, which I believe is now finished, uh, basically, they studied every question with similar lines of 100 people were asked. The reason we asked 100 people is it's a nice representative sample of our population, as in the whole of Australia. 100 people, very small. But chances are, with 100 people, I'll have hit 
an equal number of males and females. I'll have hit an equal number of children and old people and young people and some who are married and some who are single and all sorts of demographics of Australia. So samples are really, really important to me. Now, I, I can't think in terms of populations of Australia. Let's now narrow this down to, I'm gonna think about doing some sort of a survey. I'm gonna try and find out something about the year 12s in my school. Now, let's imagine that I actually have 200 year 12 students in my school and I want to find out something about them. Well, yes, I could turn around and say, all right, everyone, we're gonna have an assembly. Can all of year 12 come and sit in a room, please? And I'm gonna ask you all, you know, 500 questions. Highly unlikely the school would let me do that. Uh, highly unlikely that year 12 would want to do that. What if some of the year 12s are absent? Lots of problems with that particular system. So I'm not gonna ask 200 people. I'm gonna choose a representative sample, which basically means I'm gonna choose 50 of my year 12 students. But which 50? Well, why don't I stand outside, I don't know, the, uh, the changing rooms, the boys' changing rooms? Now, that sounds very, very wrong, but what I'm saying is, if I stand in the wrong place and just sort of count and say, oi, you, 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 you're all chosen, then the problem is there that my sample isn't random. I've chosen in a stupid place. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and find ways to choose those 50 people quite, quite randomly. And I could throw the numbers, you know, every student has what we call an ID number. In fact, every teacher, everyone in this world will have some form of an ID number to keep us in a database and to track us and all those conspiracy theories. But you have an ID number. So what I could do is print them all off and cut them up and sort of scrunch them up and put them in the sorting hat and pick them out one by one. That's very, very time consuming. How can we do it better? Well, because this is a CAS course, this is a technology enabled course, we can actually use our CAS to do this for us. And so firing up my CAS, this is what we're gonna do. So move my calculator into a way that I can actually see it without blinding myself in the studio lights. As you can see now, you've got the screen pulled up. I'm gonna press the down arrow and this is already printed for me, but generally speaking, what you'll end up with is your calculator will look like that. All I've done is I've hit the right arrow twice and hit the R button because I know the function I want, which is now highlighted with a red arrow, is random list. I want my calculator to give me a random list of numbers. Well, obviously it needs some parameters. It needs me to say, well, what is it you're looking for? Well, I've decided I want 50 people. So I'm gonna do 50 random numbers. So the first number is how many numbers do you want me to generate or the calculator to generate 50? And what am I gonna do? Well, I've got 200 people in my school. So I'm gonna number them from one to 200. So what they're saying is give me 50 random numbers between the number one and the number 200. When I hit enter, it's gonna think about it and poof, pipa poof, up comes 50 random numbers. So in that situation now, what am I gonna do? Well, I now know that I'm gonna choose the person with ID 67, 91, 84, 48, 115, and so it goes on. Now, if I was to scroll right, we may find uh, that actually some of the numbers are in fact repeated. Now, why would there be repeats of numbers? The calculator doesn't know what you're doing with the data. You've literally said, can you do me a favor? Can you just choose 50 random numbers between one and 200? It doesn't know that it's not allowed to repeat numbers. And in fact, it's very hard for a calculator to try and keep track of all that stuff. So just be aware that sometimes your calculator may give you repeat numbers, and in which case you would need to go back and find other ways. Maybe you would do rand list again to choose the duplicates or to remove the duplicates. Now, if you're a TI Inspire user, really sorry guys, I'm doing videos on that a bit later on, but not at this moment in time. All right, so I've chosen my 50 people. My calculator has given me those 50 people. What do I do now? Well, the reason of choosing those 50 people is we are looking for something about them. You know, we're trying to look for stress levels, or maybe we're looking at something so very simple as what is the average height of a year 12 student? What is the average age? What is the average weight? What is the average IQ? And there are so many things that we could do to find the average. Now, the average is where you take all those people, find out the information, and sort of divide it. All the things given here are actually called sample statistics. Why? because we're finding out a piece of information from my sample. Not my population, my sample. So that's very, very useful. And so for example, if we wanted to find our sample mean for something, we call that with the letter X bar. Now you've already met that before. You know, in previous videos, we've looked at how to find the mean of a set of data. Now interestingly, what we didn't tell you was that set of data was a sample. We didn't know where it came from. We didn't know the whole population. We just gave you sample. 
What happens though, if I wanted to find out the average age or the average weight of everyone in my population? Well, lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, we call it a population parameter. I don't know why we don't call it a population statistic. We call it a population parameter. And so when we have a population parameter or we have our population mean, in maths, we use the letter mu for that, All right? So when we're working out the mean of a whole population, we use that Greek character, which is a mu, and I'm not joking, that's exactly how we say it. So again, really important to be able to know this uh, terminology for when we do the questions. All right, so I've got my 50 people. In fact, I'm actually gonna change it because 50 is way too long. Imagine I have 20 people out of that 50. Imagine I went back and I said, no, I'll just do 20 people. I now want to split them into two groups. I want to do some sort of experiment where 10 of them do my experiment and I trick 10 of them to think they're doing my experiment, but they're not actually. And actually they do that in medical all the time. They actually take people into hospital and they give a random sample. They give like 10 people pills that they think might cure and they give 10 people pills and actually they're just sugar pills or they're something that those people think they're getting the same stuff. And what they do is they do a survey and they try and work out, did the tablets actually solve the problem? Yes, and so by having 10 people take them and 10 people not take them, they can do some sort of survey. I have here 20 ladies' names and I want to be able to split them into groups. I've got two groups and so actually once again, I use my CAS calculator. Now this situation, I'm gonna use rand list again how many people have I got? I've got 20 people. So I'm saying to the calculator, give me 20 numbers. But this time I'm just gonna have one comma two. I'm just gonna say I want 20 numbers that are either a one or a two. When I hit enter, what comes up? Here come these numbers. So using that list now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write them out. One, one, two, two, one, two, one, one, two, 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 two. two. Obviously this sounds a bit special, but anyway. One, one, two, two, one, two, and let's just say two, one. Okay, now that was really hard to read off that calculator. I don't know about you, but I was like, uh, I think I'm a bit lost. So we have to be very careful there that we knew what we were doing. But hopefully we've now got 10 girls in group one and 10 girls in group two. Let's just check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, hold on a moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and again, problem with the calculator is it doesn't know what you're actually trying to do with the information. It's done what you've asked it. It's given you 20 numbers that are either ones or twos. What it hasn't done is it hasn't actually given me an equal number. So what do we do now? Do we go back and do it again until it does? No, we, and don't tell anyone I've said this, budget. Basically, you just suddenly go, oh, Mia, really sorry, sweetie. You're actually now gonna be a group one. The rest of it is fairly random. We now have 10 on 10, but if no one knows that Mia was actually in group two, but we forced her into group one, all is good. So there we go, using our calculator to do that is absolutely awesome. Now I've highlighted there, because <laughs> I'm trying to, what I'm about to show you, I've got literally no idea why they would do this, other than to ask you a random question in an exam to see if you actually understand how to use your calculator. The question is extracted from the Cambridge Further Mathematics Textbook Series. Thank you, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your questions. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Now, your calculator can provide normally distributed data. If you don't understand what I mean by normally distributed data, please go back and watch some of the previous videos which deal with normally distributed data and the idea of means and standard deviations and all that type of stuff. Now, your calculator can do this for you, and it is awesome how it does it. Okay, so loading up my calculator from my screen, I am actually going to be using my statistics mode in this particular case. Now, as you can see, as is normal here, I've got list one, list two, and list three. The question says, a distribution of delivery times for pizzas made by Pizza House is approximately normal with a mean of 25 and a standard deviation of five. Okay, thank you very much. Very happy with that. Good, 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 moving on. So it says, use the ran norm command on your calculator. So we need to go into statistics. Now the first thing we know is that we're doing times. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm going to change my list by bringing up um, keyboard, ABC, and I'm gonna say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, or calculator, can we think of this in terms of time? And it will say, certainly. How do we now create the random norm? Well, 
it says a random norm. We've got to find that random norm, but the calculator wants us to actually put a calculation in there first. So I'm going to put, you notice I clicked in that bottom there, and then I said, well, okay, calculation. And I'm going to hit keyboard, and I'm going to go back because I don't want that. I'm going to hit down. I'm going to go across because I'm trying to find my random norm button. And there we go, just below the random list that I used a moment ago is my rand norm. So, touch that so that it appears in my, and we once again have to provide three pieces of information. So, what I'm gonna firstly do is gonna go five comma 25 comma 200, and close my bracket. Now, what I'm hoping that means is that the first value is my uh, standard deviations, my next is my mean, and the last one is the number of data items. I'm gonna hit enter. And hopefully the calculator is going to think about it and come up with 15, 23, 17, 28. And I'm going to scroll down and just see how many values I've got. Do I have 200 values? And so having got that information in my calculator, what do we now see? Well, I've scrolled up and I've scrolled down and I've taken away that formula box for to show you. And we see all of my data items. What does the question then go on to say? Use the data to calculate the mean and standard deviation of the sample of delivery times. Now, it seems a bit weird really, because we've actually already got the mean and the standard deviation, but bear in mind they told us. But this is about testing to see whether your calculator actually does this correctly. So what I'm gonna do is click once again. I'm now gonna go calc, and I'm gonna go one variable. And if you remember from what we did previously, we've got to put the actual list we've got. Now, we don't have anything at this moment titled list one. So we're going to go down, and we do know that we've got main time. Leave the frequency as one. Click on OK. And lo and behold, up comes my screen. And what you can see now is X bar, which is my sample mean, is actually 24.56. OK, that's not bad calculator. We asked for 25. You've done your best, but we got 24.56. And our standard deviation is 4.96. And again, we wanted a standard deviation of roughly around 5 or 5. And we'll just check that n is 200. Ladies and gentlemen, there we go. That is the end of this video on basically all the stuff that we needed to describe populations and sample data. And we've used our calculator to help us find bits and pieces as well. So, Populations and Samples is done. Thank you very much for watching. If you are able to, over there is a doohickey that you can click to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And below it is a video loading on something else on further maths. Hope you've had a good day. Let me know what you thought of the video by leaving a comment below. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you next time. This is Mascuru out. Have a good day. Bye-bye.